My name is Elizabeth Brake. I teach philosophy at Arizona State University, and today I want to talk to you about polyamory. Many conservative arguments against same-sex marriage warned that legally recognizing same-sex marriage would be a slippery slope to legally recognizing polygamy. Of course, this hasn't happened in Canada, where same-sex marriage was recognized in 2005. In Canada, the British Columbia Supreme Court upheld Canada's criminal ban on polygamy because it found that polygamy, unlike same-sex marriage, tends to harm women and children. But this lecture is on polyamory, not polygamy. What's the difference? It's right there in the name. Polygamy means many marriages, and polyamory means many loves. Polygamy, which is largely practiced as polygyny, one husband, many wives, usually involves gendered spousal norms, different roles for men and women. Polyamory could be same-sex or involve different sexes. Polygamy expects sexual exclusivity from the wives, whereas polyamory involves a commitment to openness. The polygamous groups the BC Supreme Court looked at were in small communities with problems like inadequate education and child sexual abuse. While polyamorists tend to be highly educated urbanites, as Elizabeth Sheff reports in her book, the polyamorists next door. Chef's longitudinal study of children in polyamorous families found no significant harms. Polyamory, the practice of having multiple sex and love partners, is usually seen as an alternative to gender-structured monogamous marriage. Polyamory could be people in an open marriage or open relationship or it could be a group of three people living together, known as a triad, or four people, known as a quad. In polyfidelity, three or more people commit to an exclusive relationship within their group. I've argued that a liberal state has no business discriminating between same-sex and different-sex relationships on moral grounds and no business discriminating between friendships and romantic sexual relationships on moral grounds. By the same reasoning, it has no business preferring two to three or four. Of course, there's an upper limit on how many close, intimate, stable, mutually caring relationships a person can sustain. For most of us, that number isn't that high. Polyamorists report that their biggest problem is not jealousy, but having enough time. But a group relationship, whether between friends or lovers, can involve more than one stable, caring relationship. If the rationale of marriage law is to support stable, caring relationships, then they should be eligible for marriage-like entitlements such as special eligibility for immigration. Where the state can draw the line, as it did in Canada, is with relationships that are coercive, that involve people such as children unable to give competent consent, or relationships that lack exit options. Of course, small groups raise practical problems that couples don't. Could someone extend special immigration eligibility to five people or claim caretaking leave for five partners? What should we make of spousal immunity from testifying in a group? The state might need to set limits to protect other interests, such as efficiency. But in principle, caring relationships deserve equal treatment, whether they involve two or three or four members. In fact, legal marriage isn't actually a goal for many polyamorists. Many explicitly reject what they see as the possessive norms of marriage. In a survey, polyamorists listed employment discrimination and health insurance as top priority legal issues. 
Polyamorous can be fired or refused housing because they love more than one person. A child can even be taken away from its parents simply because they are poly. While I've argued that polys should have equal access to marriage-like entitlements, protection against discrimination in employment and housing and child custody might be even more vital. And we should stop to reflect here that such protections are still needed for lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transgendered people. Equal marriage rights are only part of what justice requires.